Well, talking about paddock life, I've literally walked into kind of a real family area here. We've got the whole family here. Steve Mercer, hello. Hello, how are you doing? You alright? Yeah, really good. It's gorgeous out here at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, it's not been too bad. We've been here since, uh, I think we've been here a week now. We're not seeing a cloud, so no, it's, um, you don't get out of the Isle of Man often, do you? So no, it's good. Now you've got your sister here, haven't you, Amy, um, which we'll come to talk to in a minute. And this, we can't really sell the Isle of Man basically being this sunny all the time, can we? No, do you know what? She said to me out of winter, oh, I'm going to come to the Isle of Man. I was thinking, oh, you're probably better off going to Spain, to be honest, because it's probably going to rain. It's going to be cold and miserable. But no, she, uh, she certainly brought the weather over with her. So no, it's, um, yeah, it's good. It's good to come over and just go, I think she's over for a week. You're over for a week? How are you going to cope with having your sister over for a week? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how she's going to cope. It, uh, she went up to the grandstand last night and watched from the grandstand. It's the first time she's seen a uh, motorbike go properly far. So, yeah, that, um, that opened her eyes. I'm going to have to talk to you about that in a minute, Amy, because it is pretty terrifying, isn't it? Steve, just give us a little bit of background with regards to you growing up, obviously, and uh, getting into biking. You've always been on some kind of bike, haven't you, from a young kid? Yeah, from when I was sort of three or four, really. I used to ride BMXs and stuff like that. And I was quite heavily into BMXing until sort of, you know, I become a teenager. But a few mates had bikes when we was young and like really young and uh, I used to go out with him and his dad across the field and ride his Pee Wee 50 and stuff and then I always used to ask my mum for a bike but it was never going to happen which you know right most mums won't buy their boys bikes will they so the only time I was going to get a bike when I, was, when I brought a bike and I um I worked at a chip shop and saved up all my money every night and brought a YZ125 and it went from there really and yeah it went from how there. How much money did you have to save up at the chip shop? £485. <laughs> Is that how much your first bike cost? £485 yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay so where did you take it from there then? Well it started off there we used to ride around the fields and stuff and Amy used to like use, use cut the field chuck her on the back and do a few wheelies and stuff like that. Hang on hang on hang on you took I've got to bring her in at this moment hang on come on Amy you let your brother take you on the back and go around the fields really? Yeah I did I used to love it absolutely love it wherever my brother was with the bike I wasn't far behind him so yeah absolutely loved it but you never actually thought about going and driving it yourself no I'd probably still be on that start line now I don't <laughs> want to be gone but yeah no that's not my ideal of uh, fun I like watching <laughs> so how did you feel obviously with having your sister on the back did you feel like you had to really really be a, little, be a bit more conscious of the safety no I was a teenager <laughs> didn't think about things like that I mean um you know that's how I met Caroline I uh my I used to, we was all kids we used to just fly about on bikes anywhere really and back then it was, it was a lot more lenient you know you could just go anywhere and kick them out you know, start them outside your house and ride them up the road but yeah I was going through the field one day and um, there's like an alleyway and my mate was walking down there with a can of beer and Caroline was there and I rode past him grabbed his can of beer kept riding and then yeah then I uh, so I nicked his can of beer and I ended up nicking his girlfriend about three years later so yeah and quite... she's hiding isn't she is that actually true that is, unfortunately, that is true. So he That's nicked a beer so and later nicked the girlfriend? He certainly did, yeah. <laughs> Do you still speak with this guy at all? Occasionally, probably not now, but... <laughs> yeah. Funnily enough, funnily enough, I still speak to him, and the thing was, we was all kids back then, and, you know, if it was now, it'd be a lot different. We were all kids, and, you know, it, uh, yeah, we was all kids, and things happen when you're kids, don't they? So, yeah. So you met at a really young age, didn't you? Mm, okay. Yeah, I think we were, what, 14, 15? And you knew this was something he was going to do, do you think? Yeah, well, I met him on a bike, so yeah, pretty much. Yeah, he and had um, he had a, a girlfriend before me, and she she didn't like it. And she... Steve had a girlfriend before you, really? <gasps> yeah, shock horror. And, uh, and yeah, that was uh, what was it? She said to you, honey, it was it was her on the bike. So the girlfriend went, and the yeah. bike stayed. <laughs> it didn't go well for her. Well, I just bought a brand new GSXR. What was I ever going to get rid of my bike? I mean, what was she thinking? <laughs> and there's a few people that would agree with that, definitely. Okay, so how do you feel about him racing now, and obviously being at the TT and everything that he does? Um, I tend not to think about it too deeply, really. Just um, take it one lap at a time, one sector at a time. Just I don't watch at all. I don't go in the grandstand or anything. I just sit and look at my iPad and watch the timing and... That's it. So you wish we did something else, like was a plaster or something else. You no, know, knitting would be great. You know, <laughs> fishing that would be fine. Yeah, but yeah. And now mm -hmm. also, you've got two sons, haven't you? And Daniel, you know, he's got his own offset, hasn't he? Now. Yeah. Yeah. He's. Uh, he said the other morning when I was getting ready, I'm going to be just like Daddy. I'm going to ride a bike and so, just just be a private dentist, please, or something like that. Come on now, you know, doctor, whatever. Not. And on the serious side of it, will you try and curb him away from it, or actually, are you going to support him? I would prefer if he didn't, and I will try and, yeah, curb him away from it. But if he wants to, I'll support him. Because it can be really expensive, can't it? I mean, I want to talk to you, Steve, a little bit about the sponsors, actually, because, you know, RST have been very good to you. Yeah, RST have been really loyal to me. From uh, from 2013, it was Classic TT, where I met Stuart Millington, and um, 
he he came up to me and he said, "Oh, Steve," he said, "Where are you getting your crash helmets from?" And I said, oh, "I'm not on Barnum." And he said, "All oh, right," because Arrow used to be distributed by Phoenix Distribution, and uh, most of the direct took it over. And you know, Stuart didn't need to come over to me and say that because I was buying them anyway. But you know, that's how how great a company they are. He said, "Look, come and see me now from now on, and I'll sort your crash helmets out." And that led to levers and gloves and boots. And now, you know, I get looked after. I get factory levers, and they're all made to measure. All my gloves are made to measure. My boots. You know, that's they're just so loyal, and they put so much into the sport. I mean, if you look at any class throughout the world, you will see RSC riders, and they. There's not many companies that put that much back into the sport. A lot, a lot of companies take out the sport but don't put it back in. Whereas RST, they're there and they look after everyone. And yeah, they they just they're just a great company. And I'm not just saying that because I'm sponsored by RST. You know, if anyone goes and goes into a shop, try RST stuff before you try anything else. So I'm, I'm, I guarantee it'll be nearly half the price and just as good quality. And I was going to talk to you about the quality as well, actually, because have you had an experience where you've really realised that the leathers are that protective? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I crashed at Le Mans um, in qualifying. I had a massive arsehole about 120 mile an hour, and I went straight down the road. And, you know, I got up, and it was, it was like, you know, the levers were really, really scuffed, but there was no marks on me, and they'd done their job, and that's exactly what they're for. And then I wore them levers again, and I had another spill that day. And, again, you know, they, they stood up two big, fast crashes, and... You know that just says that's testament to the to the quality of what you're wearing. And Johnny Johnny Towers, he he's out riding every weekend. He's developing them levers. He's getting the, he's making them levers the best. And you know that's one of the reasons why I think they put so much back into the sport because they put it into the sport. We we test the levers. We get them up to scratch. And then when the road riding goes to buy them, they're they're perfect. And I saw the knee sliders the other night having a bit of brass in them. So uh, yeah, got 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 a bit close there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've got to have a bit of showboat and stuff, and haven't you? And um, I didn't actually mean to do that. I don't actually even know where that was. Um, you know, you get so focused around here, and you get sort of stuck in. And your knees do drag near the curbs. They do drag near the grass banks and the hedges and stuff like that. And we're trying hard. We're using all the road. So yeah, it does. Um... Somebody could have cut, they cut that grass though, though, couldn't they? I mean, it, like literally, it was just like they were stuck in all and around the knee slider, weren't they? Yeah, you think they would have done it? Um, like, well, I've cut it now, yeah, so you yeah, don't need yeah, to. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so basically, sponsorship is a huge thing, isn't it? But family sport really is a big thing. So you've obviously got your sister here. I want to go back. Oh, we've got the little man here now too, haven't we? He's just woken up and obviously wants to have a little chat too. Um, and he's six months old, right? Uh, Sorry, ten, year old. Ten months. So you were pregnant last year yeah <gasps> heavily pregnant yeah pregnant with a little one on the start line but as you say oh, yes. you don't go and watch no no I don't go and watch I always um always see him off I wasn't sure if they'd let me last year because I was rather a wide load but um <laughs> there are others up there that are bigger than me so that was fine and um and the thing is obviously you have got the little one and you've got obviously Daniel and it does that play in your mind at all when you're out there um I think it it doesn't slow you down I think it makes you stop doing silly things um definitely makes you stop you know when I was a little bit younger and we used to do it I think you'd probably take more risk but more risk now more calculated but it hasn't slowed me down it's actually made me faster because I think about my riding more I make sure I hit my apexes and I'm riding clean and I'm riding safe and you know it's tough it's tough to do TT and I wouldn't better do it I wouldn't better come to a TT on my own I, you know I need Caroline with me I need like Sheila and Dave my far, mother and father-in-law with me and the boys with me and like, they've not missed a TT they've been here every TT and you, you couldn't come and do this on your own you, you need that support yeah 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 yeah. hang on a minute he needs you here to be able to do the cooking the washing the cleaning the feeding the cooking well. you know doesn't he basically yeah, doesn't he and now mother-in-law as well yeah. here's the mother-in-law yeah. too yeah. gets involved it's a real family affair isn't it and Amy yeah. Amy you are here for the first time aren't you so I'm going to have to have a sneaky little chat with you how are you how are you finding it I mean you watched him obviously go out and as his sister you know how are you you finding it um amazing absolutely amazing you're so up for this aren't i you? am i always have been i am um i'm very scared when i first was on that pit my heart was racing like no tomorrow absolutely scared and when he took off i could feel the tears but overwhelmed absolutely overwhelmed and then he came around for the first time and i looked up and it was 173 miles per hour and i went wow i'm i'm all for his racing i am always have been always been proud of him um i've always looked up to my brother we've I've never been that far away from him i'm afraid <laughs> so what is it about him that you know really you do looked up to why is passion he's got passion for racing and it's his passion and you know he gives that and it's rubbed off and yeah and amy you own a hair salon don't you wasn't it right that your brother kind of said to you do you know what if you want to do something just do it yeah he did he said to me you know what chances in life take a chance I take a chance every time I go out on that track so I thought fine I'll take a chance and it's successful and it's doing me well and it's made me come here today so 
sunny, sunny day. Well, I have got a few questions for you, Steve, actually, that have been asked on Twitter that I want to go through um, with you. We've got Carl. Now, this is an interesting one because it's to do with photographs, and he's wanting you to do some big wheelies at Balagari tonight. Do you think you can pull that off? I can, I can do that without even trying. It's, uh, you know, what like, yeah, no, it's, um, that's a fast corner, that. So, yeah, no, we're definitely doing some wheelies for Balagari. Do you get all strange requests from photographers? Uh, obviously, Steve Babb is filming this, you know, say what you like. Uh, no, not really. Um, you get a few, like, look at the camera, but they, you don't know where the cameras are. So, yeah, no, you get, you get, you get, you get the odd one, but... How much do photographers mean to you, though, and obviously what you do? Oh, it's great. You know, you, when you come in after a session, you just know, as soon as you look on Facebook or Twitter, there's going to be loads of pictures, and they, they're cool. And we was playing around over Solby Bridge the other day, and I, I could see all the photographers there, and um, I sort of styled a, I styled a big wheelie, and I think it had, like, two or 3,000 hits or something that night. And so the next night, I thought, right, let's style another wheelie. And it's like, every time I've gone through there now, apart from last night, because it got a bit serious, it's... Um, yeah, it was like, you know, just doing some nice wheelies and stuff. Just enjoying it, you know, enjoying it. And I think that's why, um, I think that's how you go fast around it. Just okay, so teammate John McGuinness, if he gets more likes on photos, do you get a bit fed up? Come on, no. be honest now, come on. No, absolutely not. I've, um, <laughs> I've got nothing but respect for John. And, you know, he's it, actually, it's, a, it's quite overwhelming being his, being his teammate, really. Coming, obviously, from the people's bike as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I, I watched something a little while back, and um, it was John talking about Joey. And um, you know, I'm nowhere near John's level, but sort of what John, how John was speaking about Joe is how I sort of used, how I speak about John. You know, I admire what he's done. He's won 23 TTs. He's probably going to win a couple more this week, and that takes from doing that and like to come back every year and still be competitive and still be fast and still be out the front. You know, you've got to, um, you know, you've got. To, I've got a lot of respect for John, like everyone else has. Okay, so another question for you: How tough is it racing at the same time doing a full-time job? Um, yeah, it is quite. It is quite tough. I'm quite lucky that I work for a company called Manini Brown, still directing, and uh, they give me um, they give me quite a bit of time off in the summer, uh, which works well. I mean, I couldn't actually go and have a normal job because a normal job wouldn't allow you to sort of go racing for two weeks and then come back for two weeks and go racing for a week. And you know, throughout the summer you're racing sort of nearly every weekend. Plus, you lose like the Fridays and the Mondays, so it's very difficult to have a, a a proper full-time job so the company I work for is led uh, Rob McNeely he races in Superstock so he knows he knows how it all works he knows how you know the racing system works and he just says to me right we get to March so, right I suppose you're off again then till, till August <laughs> I'm like yeah see ya so yeah no, a bit good. of a jolly yeah not. I'm a bit of a jolly up and I work hard in the winter like I work I work really hard in the winter. I, I sort of, you know, I do a 12-hour night shift. So I work all over Christmas. And is that just to make up, obviously, of what you're going to do here? Yeah, 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 for, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, obviously, you lose, you know, you lose sort of six months of the year racing in the summer. You've got to try and make it up in the winter. And I'm quite lucky, like you know, Caroline. She, uh, she's, um, she's a brains of the outfit. If we didn't have Caroline about, then it would be a lot more difficult. So yeah. I'm just watching her wandering around. Obviously, the little one around the office. He's got his eye on it. And I can also smell something really good cooking. So what's for dinner tonight? Do you eat before you go out Spaghetti. racing? What's for dinner? Biscetti. Biscetti. I can't even say it. Biscetti? <laughs> oh, quite I, I, posh around here, aren't we? Well, we do try to be. We're from southern England. I'm quite impressed that. Kip is around here, girl. Sauce. Pasta sauce. Pasta sauce. And we have something like that before you go out? No, I've just had a, uh, I had a jack potato and some beans and stuff a couple of hours ago, so that do me until until after, so otherwise it's um, a bit windy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Take that. laughs> so yeah, I'll eat when I get back here.